Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the verse by verse Bible study. Today we are going to study about the glory of the cross. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for your wonderful, marvelous love for us. Father, we thank you so much that you sent our Lord Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God to die on the cross on behalf of our on behalf of us. Father, we thank you our Lord Jesus died for our sins. And the punishment that was supposed to come upon us was upon our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you our Lord Jesus was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our sins. Father, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Father, we thank you our Lord Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law that the blessing of Abraham might be upon us. Father, we thank you that our Lord Jesus bore our sicknesses, our diseases, that we may be healed, that we may be healthy, that we may live long and strong and healthy. Father, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Our Lord Jesus became poor for us on the cross that we might become rich and father we praise your holy name you are our good father and you care for us you love us and we appreciate your great love for us father we pray you teach us your word and your ways father we pray you grant us wisdom knowledge understanding and revelation concerning what our lord jesus christ did on the cross and what he has accomplished for us. Reveal the work of redemption to us. Father, we thank you so much for your mighty, marvelous revelation. Father, we thank you for your wisdom and teaching. Father, we pray that you stretch out your hand to heal people and to meet their needs and fulfill their desires. Father, we pray for your strength in their spirit, soul and body. Father, let them move forward, be successful and triumph and overcome. Father, we pray for your comfort for your people. Father, we pray, we pray for your peace upon your people. Father, we love you. We worship you. We thank you so much that you heard and answered our prayers. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, our God is good. Our God is awesome. Our God loves us. Our God cares for us. You know, we are a privileged people. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is in Deuteronomy. Uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Look at this. Um, let's read from verse uh, 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Now, Deuteronomy is essentially composed of two major things one it's a rehearsal of what god has already said and taught right in uh, genesis exodus and um, leviticus and numbers and then it is also a teaching to help them inherit the blessing inherit the good land that god has promised them and to keep it to continue in it that's what deuteronomy does he teaches and trains God's people to inherit the blessing and to retain the blessing and to continue in that blessing. Hallelujah. It's a great book. You should spend some time reading it, studying it. It will help you. Right? Now notice um, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. Keep you know the word of God and do them. Obey them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. The word of God gives us wisdom and understanding, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now people may mock you, you know, provoke you and do all that. But when you keep applying the word of God in your life and keep obeying the truth of God's word and God's... <laughs> Uh, results God's blessing and goodness starts manifesting in your life they will they will testify they will open their mouth and they will testify this is a wise people their ways are good they will say it 
it has happened in our lives and it has happened in the, in the lives of many christians right and to begin with you know people will provoke you they will say this they will say that and they will stand against you resist you but if you will be determined and continue in the ways of god and the people start seeing god's goodness manifest in your life <laughs> they will change their tune you understand this hallelujah now notice verse 7 for what nation is there so great who has god so nigh unto them or near unto them as the lord our god is in all things that we call upon him for what nation is there so great that the god, that has statutes and judgment so righteous as all this law which i set before you this day the two greatest blessings that man could ever hope for right is the word of god the revealed written word of god and the presence of god in our lives those are the two greatest blessings and we have that we have a huge advantage over every other people and nation god almighty is near to us the maker of heaven and earth is near to us and we are new testament believers right he is more near to us he is dwelling inside us and we have his word revealed to us those are the biggest advantages in our life you understand this right and when you have god and his word and his wisdom with you you will win <laughs> hallelujah you will do well say i will do well god is with me right god has given me his word i will do well hallelujah hallelujah you should say that often god almighty is with me god has given me his word his covenant i will do well i will prosper i will succeed hallelujah hallelujah to jesus let's go to first uh, corinthians chapter 1 and we will read our text verse 10 onwards i'm sorry verse 18 onwards for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of god hallelujah see the word concerning what our lord jesus has done for us right gives us light and through that light faith comes and when faith comes the power of god is released into our life and we get saved right it, 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 have to accomplish what you believed hallelujah hallelujah to jesus verse 19 for it is written right for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent where is the wise where is the scribe where is the disputer of this world has not god made foolish the wisdom of this world for after that in the wisdom of god the world by wisdom knew not god it pleased god by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe what looks foolish and you know and a small thing in the eyes of people god can use it to do great things hallelujah now god did not give david the best sword right when when he went against um, goliath no he gave him a stone and a sling right and that's all david needed to bring down goliath god did not equip moses right with a mighty army and with a great um, you know amount of wealth and gold to pay the army and to fight the battle no god gave him a staff a rod right <laughs> that's all he needed to bring down a mighty nation a mighty empire na right? egypt imagine that so when god wants to bring about this mighty redemption of his people he did the hard part by doing whatever is required for accomplishing the re- uh, redemption and then he said go tell it to people and let them hear you and through that hearing faith will come and if they will act on that faith they will be saved it's simple 
God gave us the simple part. God always gives us the simple part. He always does the heavy lifting. You understand this? Hallelujah. So, verse 22. The Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. And to the Jews a stumbling block. And to the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, no matter who you are in this planet, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. You understand this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, um, we have covered quite a bit of it, quite a bit of ground, right? And uh, we can't possibly go back and rehearse everything. So, if you are uh, joining us just now for this series, I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous messages. They will be a great blessing to you. Hallelujah. Uh, today, we are going to continue uh, what we um, began to speak in the previous message, right? Jesus being the Lamb of God. God promised the Messiah in the Garden of Eden itself. He said, um, He, right, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the devil right god promised a savior who will defeat the devil for us in the garden of eden itself so from then on he began to teach man concerning the solution for the sin problem the solution how to overcome sin and its effects so god gave them various sacrifices he taught them about the sacrifices we looked at what God taught Adam, Abel, Noah, and uh, through Moses, uh, the Israelites, right? And um, we spent quite a bit of time on that and we covered um, uh, the Passover also, and the Passover lamb. And uh, the New Testament describes our Lord Jesus as the Passover lamb, right? And um, we also began to look at this revelation that John particularly brought out. Right in his teachings, Jesus being the Lamb of God, who is sacrificed for the sins of all the world. You know, Israelites were familiar with offering a sacrifice for the sin of an individual, or a priest, or the nation itself. Right, and um, but they they were not familiar with um, a sacrifice that would uh, bring about forgiveness for all of mankind all of the world right they were not very familiar with that but this is taught from the very beginning i want you to look at a, a great example and a great teaching through the life of abraham concerning our lord jesus being the lamb of god and uh, there is a distinction that's made even in his life and in the promises that were spoken to him so um go with me to uh, genesis Genesis. We are continuing our study concerning Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Look at the blessing that was pronounced upon, um, uh, promised to Abraham, right? Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show thee. God separated him because he wanted him, he wanted a a man and through the man a family and a nation that would learn his ways and serve him so that he can bring the Messiah into the world through them. Hallelujah. And uh, <coughs> verse 2. These are the promises and pay close attention to the promise. The first promise is, I will make of thee a great nation. That's Israel. Right? That's the uh, covenant people through whom God is going to bring the entire world back into the fold of God, back into the kingdom of God. And I will bless you, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. One of the calling upon Abraham and, and the children of Israel is to be a blessing. And they have, they have been a great blessing to the entire planet. All the nations have been blessed through Israel. Still today they are being blessed through Israel. Right? <laughs> Some way or the other, you are using something that was, you know, that came to you through Israel. Do you know how many products come out of Israel? How many things they invented? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
if you are using a computer you are using something that was uh, that came to you through israel through a jew <laughs> and <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah to jesus anyway they are a great blessing even till today and look at verse 3 and i will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and then god says something very interesting in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed say in thee right so through abraham and through israel all the families of the earth will be blessed that's the blessing unto do you and this the bible teaches very plainly that is the gospel because through um through abraham through israel and then through jesus right now all the nations can be brought back into the kingdom of god hallelujah to jesus i want you to see that go with me to acts acts hallelujah to jesus this will help you understand the cross more effectively you know what is it <laughs> what what did jesus do on the cross all these things equip you to understand that actually go to acts chapter 3 chapter 3 let's look at verse 25 look at what um, peter is teaching as he is preaching the gospel to the children of israel you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which god made with our father saying unto abraham and in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed and to you first god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you right they were the covenant people they were the ones who served god and followed his ways and they were the they were the first partakers of the ministry of jesus and then later through jesus and the work of redemption the gospel was preached first to them hallelujah so in turning away every one of you from his iniquity so here again we see that this particular promise is being taught to us as you uh, know the door through which uh, jesus came and accomplish the work of redemption and this is being taught as the gospel paul also says the same thing when he is teaching the gentiles if you go to galatians galatians chapter 3 notice this um verse 6 even as abraham believed god and it was accounted to him for righteousness know ye therefore that they which are of faith the people who have placed their faith in jesus right the same are the children of abraham and the scripture foreseeing that god would justify the heathen through faith preached the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed right do you see this so um in the blessing of abraham the gospel was included right and the blessing that was given to abraham aided the expansion of the kingdom of god right the formation of the nation of israel and the birth of the messiah and the spreading of the gospel so when we talk about the blessing don't despise the blessing right the blessing aids the preaching of the gospel right the blessing aided the work of redemption you should understand that hallelujah all right now um hallelujah to jesus go with me to chapter 15 here again we see something very important god makes a promise to abraham you know abraham was so worried about not having one child but god had a greater plan you know first he wanted him to make him a great nation right that is the natural descendants israel and god also wanted him to be a blessing to the entire world so god brings abraham out go to chapter 15 verse 5 he brought him for the broad and said look now toward heaven tell the stars count the stars thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall your seed be again look at this promise right right so shall your seed be this was a promise given to abraham and if you go back and look at romans paul while teaching the gentiles concerning these things he talks about this particular uh, promise in connection with the gentiles uh, 
uh, becoming children of Abraham and inheriting that same uh, righteousness which was given to Abraham. Hallelujah. So, uh, look at this. Verse 16, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Say all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law. Talking about uh, the natural descendants who received the law and the circumcision. But to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Talking about the Gentiles who place their faith in the Lord Jesus. Right? Who is the father of us all? Say all. Not just Israel but all. All nations, right? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Not one nation, but many nations. So God was teaching through Abraham that he is going to bring back the entire mankind into the fold of God's kingdom. Right? God is going to be one shepherd. Right? And all of mankind will be his sheep. That's what Jesus spoke in uh, John chapter 10, verse 16. We looked at it um, in a briefly in the previous message. Right? God had already planned this. God, looked, God was working towards the salvation of all of mankind. Right? And the one sacrifice that would accomplish that is not the sacrifice of an animal, but the sacrifice of the Son of God himself. The Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus. You understand that? Right? Clear on this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, uh, keep reading. Let's go to uh, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. So when God was dealing with Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, he was not just talking about one child or one nation. He was essentially telling Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. <laughs> you are going to have kids all over the world. All over. In all nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Do you see this? Right from the beginning, God was teaching the salvation of mankind while he was dealing with his people through Abraham and his descendants. Right from then. And he always had all of mankind in his mind, not just one nation. You have to grasp this, right? Uh, go to Genesis 17. Now here we have a great, great teaching concerning the salvation of mankind. Hallelujah. You know, Abraham, when you study Abraham, remember, what he did and what happened in his life is not just about him having a child and having a family. No, it, it, how God dealt with him, right? And um, the instructions God gave him and uh, the reason for God insisting on uh, such great obedience all these things were to open the door for salvation of mankind. Right? Keep that thought in mind and study the life of Abraham. Right? In that light, you will understand it better. Hallelujah. Now, go with me to Genesis chapter 1. Uh, I'm sorry, did I say 17? Yes, yeah. This is where God uh, introduces the idea of Abraham being the father of many nations. See, when he told him, so shall your seed be, uh, Abraham did not understand it fully. He just understood that he is going to have descendants like the stars in the sky. It was a simple faith. He took it, he believed it, and God accounted that to him as, his, as righteousness. Right? Uh, here in chapter 17, he expounds on that. He tells him more. He says, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I will multiply you exceedingly. And here, for the first time, God reveals something very plainly, right? A mighty plan. God says, thou shall be a father of many nations. Say many nations. Not one nation. Many nations. When he called him, God told him, I will make of you a great nation. Here, God is revealing more. It's an expansion of what he had already told him. He had already said in you all the families of the earth will be blessed, right? Here God is revealing more to him. 
you will be a father of many nations hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and um <coughs> god says for a father of many nations i have made you keep the thought in mind and go to chapter 22 genesis 22 here <laughs> it's a beautiful beautiful teaching let's read from verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt or test abraham and said unto abraham he said behold here i am i mean sorry i, I didn't read it right god did test abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am and uh, verse 2 he said take now your son and your only son isaac underline that and i want you to look at the similarities between this and another very familiar passage in the new testament God is telling his covenant man Abraham right who is the father of many nations see Abraham is not just another dude right he is the father of many nations God had made him the father of many nations he is a representative of mankind you understand this right hallelujah you will understand these things you know as you study them in sequence in order as the holy spirit gives you light so here abraham the father of many nations is being called to do something right and um is standing before god and god is saying take now your son say your son right your only son isaac this is why god did not like um you know uh, the marriage of hagar or uh, um, god was not interested in making a covenant right uh, establishing a covenant through ishmael no god wanted abraham to have one son and that son should be received by faith god was insistent upon that because it has you know <laughs> a huge consequence all those things were given to him as instructions in order for the furtherance of god's kingdom it was not just a simple matter of abram having a baby eh big plans were behind the instructions of abraham and obedience was required so that the door for salvation can be opened for mankind adam opened the door for death to come sin and death and the devil here abram is going to open the door for the messiah to come you understand that right this is a huge thing so he had to be the only son that's why ishmael was sent away though though it sounded hard you know we are just reading it you know on the surface level what god told abram you know send away hagar and uh, ishmael right listen to sarah <laughs> it sounds harsh but then god even then told him how he will bless the kid right hallelujah and he did he was with ishmael provided for him took care of him right taught him a profession gave him a wife blessed him and his children got to great care of uh, ishmael right but isaac had to be the only born in your old age you are going to pamper that kid isn't it right you are going to love that kid with all your heart because you have waited for that son for years and um, he is your only son <laughs> and you have great love for that kid isn't it hallelujah and get thee into the land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell you of and abram complained no <laughs> abram rose up early he was quick to obey see abram understood god and his nature right and his promises uh, and his covenant so abram did not hesitate contrary to what all the various movies about these things and a portray abram did not hesitate abram understood god right so by the bible talks about how abram believed that god even if he sacrificed isaac god will raise up isaac back from the dead because the promises were given through isaac and god cannot lie and god will not break his promises what god said has to come to pass so abram was totally assured that after he sacrifices isaac god will raise him back from the dead that's the faith with which he went to mount moriah 
you understand this right okay keep those things in mind and abram rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and uh, donkey and took two of his young men with him isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which god had told him and uh, then on the third day abram lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off and abram said unto his young men abide you here with the ass and i and the land will go yonder and worship and come again to you right when i first read i thought abram is just lying you know so that he doesn't create any tension here <laughs> but um no see he he already expected god to raise back isaac from the dead even though he is sacrificing him right he expected god to raise isaac from the dead and he fully expected to come back with isaac that's why he said we will come again to you and abram took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both of them together and isaac spake unto abram his father and said my father and he said here am i here am i my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering this is one of the most profound statements and it's a prophetic statement and abram said my son god will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering you know sometimes people uh, even though they are just having a normal conversation many times they say prophetic prophetic things without even realizing it you remember um, kaiafas after lazarus was raised from the dead these people and all the elders of israel the leadership gathered together they were plotting against jesus and they they were worried you know he's doing so many miracles what are we going to do and that's when kaiafas said now he did not understand that he was prophesying according to god's uh, will and the scripture right he was you know just plotting but what he said was prophetic and the holy ghost says it was prophetic right go with me to john john chapter 11 Look at this. Hallelujah to Jesus. Um verse 49, John 11, verse 49. One of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, "You know nothing at all. Nor consider that it is expedient or advantageous for us that one man should die for the people, that the whole nation perish not." right and this speak he not of himself but being high priest that year he prophesied that jesus should die for that nation and as usual john will always add this not for that nation only but that also he should gather together in one the children of god that were scattered scattered abroad or from all nations do you see this right this is typical of john he will always add that he will emphasize on that jesus did not die just for israel but for all the nations of the world hallelujah and notice here he he was just plotting against jesus that too but being the high priest right god moved through that man and he was actually prophesying right it was from this point forward that the plot thickened it took steam right <laughs> and it it thing started moving verse 53 notice then from that day for they took counsel together for to put him to death because the prophetic was released the prophetic word was released and from that moment right they started working towards uh, the death of the lord jesus christ jesus also realized it and he picked that up in his spirit and jesus therefore walked no more openly among the jews do you see this hallelujah All right so back to Genesis I don't know if we have time let's look at this yeah we will close with this Genesis chapter 22 And so when Abraham said My son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering He was prophesying something powerful Actually 
even in this case god did provide a lamb for himself because he stopped abram from sacrificing isaac and in that place god had already arranged for a ram right and also for the sin of mankind to deliver mankind god provided himself a lamb right he did not ask man to bring a lamb like he usually does right for their own sin or for the sin of their nation right he did not ask another a man to die for himself you know one of those uh, normal human beings right no he sent his own son he provided the lamb usually he asked people to bring the lamb but in this case god himself provided the lamb do you see this right there's much more to discuss much more to study from this passage we will continue our study in the next message hallelujah jesus is the lamb of god that takes away the iniquity of the world hallelujah the great almighty god provided himself a lamb to solve mankind's problems hallelujah to jesus thank you so much for listening god bless you jesus is coming soon